this place is very far from being the most optimal place for me to film my introduction for this video because we're right next to one of the busiest roads and junctions of the city of Karaganda but on the other hand I really wanted to start off my video from here because as you guys can see there's this wall panel on the side of this building of who we think is Yuri Gagarin and this panel right here definitely reminds us of the incredible bravery and courage of the cosmonauts and astronauts who between the 1960s and the 1970s left for a journey to the cosmos to space a journey from which they had no idea whether they would be able to return or not Ever since I was a little kid, I've always been fascinated with the history of space exploration. I remember reading so much about the amazing feats of researchers and of the first astronauts in human history, who put their whole lives at stake just to satisfy one of mankind's greatest sense of curiosity, just to see what lied beyond the blue sky that was, and still is, the limit for most of us normal people. I had wanted to make a video about the space race for a very, very long time and last year I decided to head to legendary Kazakhstan for this is a country that played a very crucial role in the Soviet days of space exploration as most Soviet space missions met their start and their end in the steppes of Kazakhstan. Last year I decided to narrate the story of the only humans in history who lost their lives in orbit. The Soyuz 11 crew in June 1971 successfully completed the task of boarding the first world's space station Salyut 1, but the mission ended tragically when the crew capsule depressurized during preparations for re-entry, killing the three-man crew. The capsule did make it back to Kazakhstan, landing in the middle of absolute nowhere in the Kazakh desert, but there was nothing that could be done for the Soyuz 11 cosmonauts. And it was that very landing site that I set out to last year, looking to pay homage to some of the bravest men to have ever walked on Earth and beyond. Unfortunately, due to the remoteness of the area and the difficult terrain that we were navigating, our mission was unsuccessful. But this year, I was determined to try again, doing a few things in a slightly different way to ensure a successful completion of the mission. The first main difference between last year and this year is that this year I'm at the Aftarina, I'm at the car market. Not so much in order to buy a car, but instead what I wanted to do for today was rent a car to take us all the way through Atasu, the first village that we passed through last year, to go all the way to Karajal and then go all the way to Shalginsky, which is the closest settlement to the coordinates of the monument of Soyuz 11. So we've got this very nice Hyundai with Kazakh number plates and the other thing that is different between this year and last year is that we've got some company. There you go, this year with us we've got, what's your name again? Fred. Comment tu t'appelles? Je m'appelle Fred. Fred from France and apparently what happened is that a couple of days ago I was posting a story on my Instagram of me being in the most beautiful country in the world that is obviously Kazakhstan and this guy messaged me and he was like hey I'm in Kazakhstan too can we go on an adventure together and I was like yeah why not so if you guys want to come on a trip with me all you have to do is really just follow me on Instagram and I will take you somewhere for example, I will take you to one of the most cosmic deserts in the whole world in the middle of freaking Kazakhstan. Thanks ever so much for coming on this trip with me, man. Thanks for taking me, man. Let's go! I'm already having my issues navigating in Kazakhstan with a rental car. First and foremost, this car is automatic, as you guys can see, and I don't have that much experience driving auto basically this is my first time so i was spending 15 minutes trying to get it started when i first picked it up <laughs> but maybe we'll be able to swap hands with fred every once in a while how do you feel about driving in kazakhstan man mm, could be an interesting experience interesting experience definitely really confident about it but... <laughs> you know what is going to be an interesting experience driving all the way to the soyuz 11 monument right are you excited about that of course 
This would have been one of the most difficult missions to ever complete in the history of difficult missions. In our previous attempt, not only were we not able to see with our own eyes the monument that had been placed by the Soviets on the exact coordinates of the landing site of Soyuz 11, one of the least visited monuments in the whole world, but we had also put our lives at risk because the guy that we had taken off the street to take us through the desert definitely did not have the right car for the job and we ended up breaking down down in the middle of absolute nowhere. So before leaving Karaganda to drive the 400 kilometers to the side of the landing of Soyuz 11, we wanted to get a sign of good luck from someone special. Well, actually, I'm not even sure that Fred can legally be driving here in Kazakhstan. I'm not even sure that I am allowed to drive legally in Kazakhstan because what happened when I, when I went to the rental office is that they wanted my driving license to be translated from Italian into Russian. That's the law in Kazakhstan. And I was like, well, I don't really have that. I don't even have an international driving license. So we were like arguing back and forth for like half an hour until finally they realized that I had a couple of Russian visas on my passport. And they were like, oh, wait a second. You've got a Russian visa. Your name is written in Cyrillic, meaning that maybe you should be good to go. Even if the police stops you, just show them your Russian visa so that they can actually read your name. Then obviously you'll be fine. All right, I ain't gonna complain about that. What we found here is the very last thing that I want to show you before we leave eventually the, the grounds of Karaganda. You've got a monument in dedication to again, the most famous cosmonaut of them all. You've got Yuri. Oh, drum roll, Gagarin. Look at him. He's holding his space helmet as if he was a Formula One driver. But this guy was a lot more famous than Lewis Hamilton, Fernando Alonso, or Mazzacane. This guy was the most popular cosmonaut in history, the first man in space. So thank you, Yuri. I'm just about to leave on a journey that is quite similar to yours. Wish me luck. Let's go and pay homage to the astronauts or rather cosmonauts of Soyuz 11. Let's go. After paying tribute to Yuri Gagarin, we set off on the same route that we had traveled across in our previous attempt. Last year, we had taken the bus from Karaganda all the way to Atasu, a small town where we had taken the chance to make acquaintance with a taxi driver who had agreed to take us all the way to the coordinates of the Soyuz 11 monument, despite having no idea about its location. So we stopped for fuel in the town of Karaganda, a semi-derelict town which was the closest decently sized populated center to the Soyuz 11 monument. And then we drove on one of the least traveled roads on the whole of Kazakhstan to the semi-abandoned village of Shalginsky, population 15. From where we had to start off-roading and attempt driving on a step terrain to the coordinates where Soyuz 11 landed, in the middle of the absolute desert. And that was where our mission failed spectacularly. Our route was a bit rushed, that's what I felt it was last year. So what we were going to do today, we've rented a car from Karaganda, we will pass through the town of Atasu, just to see if we can have some memories back from, from the streets that I was traveling, that I was walking on last year, searching for a taxi driver onwards to the monument. And then we are planning on spending the night in Karajal, which is the closest proper town with something like five or six thousand people. And hopefully there's a hotel there and we'll be able to rest the night before tomorrow morning, once we will be very well rested, we'll either try and get through the steps of Kazakhstan with this car or alternatively, we'll just have to find a local who, in exchange of some money, hopefully not too much, will agree to take us to the coordinates of the monument just to make sure that we don't get lost to someone in the desert and we end up like in better cold soul or breaking bed or something. So what do you know about Soyuz 11, man? Hmm, there was an accident there. The, uh, the cosmonauts came back to Earth, but unfortunately the return didn't turn out properly and they kind of died of heat inside the capsule. Is that correct? Yeah, sort of. I think they died of asphyxiation. And yeah, those were very, very brave men, if you can say so. And we can definitely say so. So the very least thing that we can do today is just try and pay homage to them.
We have just now stopped at a place which looks familiar to us, right? Because this is the same monument, the same very monument that we stopped at when we were traveling to Atasu on the bus 12 months ago. You see the hammer and sickle with these two guys over here. There's the woman and there's the guy wearing this thing that 12 months ago I had no idea what it was called in English. But now 12 months later, I know that this is the black apron. One year has passed and my English has improved massively. One other thing that we didn't do last year was actually get inside the cafe over there to try out some food on the main highway to Karajal. And since it's 5 p.m., it's just the right time to have some dinner, shall we? After you, my friend. Ah, для меня пельмени, пожалуйста. Без укропа обязательно. И со сметана можно? Сметана нет у нас. Майонез. Майонез нет. Давайте без майонеза тогда. I don't think they get many European-looking people in this part of Kazakhstan. We entered this place and everybody was staring at us. But anyway, we still managed to get our order in for some chai, some tea, some bread, some pilmeni, obviously without ukrop, without dill, and some lagman for Fred. But unfortunately, there is ukrop indeed. There is some dill on uh, Fred's plate. So I have to keep my distance because I can smell the thing. Anyway, all of this was six euros total, so not too bad. Let's not spend too much time at this table right here so that we'll be able to get on the road as soon as possible to continue onwards. How's the lagman, man? I can see that ukrop there. That thing does not look inspiring at all. Mm. Now, the very last thing that I want to do is take advantage of all the services and amenities of this gas station right here. So apart from the food, I also want to go to the toilet, which is this thing right here. You can see M for Mushine, meaning men, and J for Genshine, meaning women. So I imagine that the bathroom for women is much nicer than the one for men. So for example, here we've got two holes for women. Let's see how many holes we've got for somebody like me, a real man. It's the exact same. Maybe one hole is for number one and the other hole is for number two. I don't know, but who am I to judge the local customs in this part of Kazakhstan? So... Right guys, it's interesting that if we look into that way, sort of southwest from here, we can see that there are some dark clouds which are threatening our adventure for today, right? And it also looks like it's actually raining somewhere 50 or 60 kilometers in that direction as we're now entering in the region of Batik. I have no idea where we are, but what I was trying to say is that I think we've made a really good decision deciding to stop in Karajal for the night considering the rain that is pouring down right there because to be honest I don't know about you guys but I haven't got many intentions to just get on a step road in the middle of absolute nowhere with a downpour which looks exactly to be what is going on right now over there I mean and I say that but I'm still not sure that there is eventually a hotel in Karajal that we can spend the night at because if there isn't it's going to be a problem ladies and ladas and boys and gentlemen we have just now entered a place that we're quite familiar with because this is the village of Atasu where we passed by last year on our way to Karajal on our way to Shalginski and on our way to the Soyuz 11 cosmonauts now we've got a friend from here because if you remember there was this taxi driver who swore that he knew how to get to the Shalginsky monument. Oh, look at this. I surely didn't see this one last year. Oh my God, look. Let's stop here for a second because we've got something, something very interesting, right? We've got another monument here that is very common in the former Soviet Union. You've got this woman holding what I think is a hammer, a symbol of the hard work of the members of the Communist Party back in the Soviet Union. And you've got a random guy dressed as a factory worker here in Atasu and here in Atasu 
I want to see if I can still pay a visit to my friend, to the taxi driver that we've met last year. Surely I'm gonna find him at the taxi spot where all the taxi drivers are, unless he's gone somewhere taking some other random dude to a random place or somewhere in the Karaganda Oblast, I don't know. If I'm gonna find the guy, I think his name was Batir, he's gonna be there. So, sorry Fred, but I think we might need to stop for a second here in Atasu. There's this taxi driver that I met last year, and I got to this place by bus and I was looking for a place onwards towards Karajal and Shalginski and this guy assured me that he got the instructions right from a friend of his on how to get to the monument right of Soyuz 11 well turns out he had no idea and he almost got me killed because the car broke down in the middle of the step can you imagine <laughs> is that fine with you of course of course, of course, that's right. Excited, Our friend though. here, you're very excited, nice. Fred is a bit camera shy, but it's absolutely fine. I mean, we're all shy in something. For example, me, I'm pee shy. I'm never able to pee in a public restroom when there's other people in the room. And I'm just not talking about urinals, for example. There's no way in hell that I'm ever able to pee in urinals. But even when I'm inside a bathroom stall, I'm never able to pee if I can hear somebody else that is outside. I just can't do it. I'm not kidding, for real. Now let's see if our friend is here. If there was one place where I was going to have any chance at finding Batir, the taxi driver from last year, was going to be exactly the same place where I had met him 12 months before, which was the taxi stand in front of the abandoned railway station of the town. Здрасте, а таксистов, я помню, что таксисты здесь были. Да, да, были, сейчас нету что-то. Сейчас нету их? Почему? Ну, потому что время уже. Время, я ищу Батира, знаете Батир? Батир. Батира, спрошу у магазина, наверное. Он мой... Да, да. Да, все равно, спасибо. Вы таксисты? Нет, нет. сами еще. А, нет, потому что я искал таксистов, потому что у меня друг Батира, знаете его? Батир, он едет между здесь и Караганде, а -а -а. как таксист. Ну не знаете, нет? А что это такое? Не знаете? Вообще не... Не место. Не место. <laughs> At this point, it looked like my friend Batir wasn't really known around the area. So I entered one of the shops near the taxi stand just to try my luck for one last time. Что это такое? А, парикмахерская. Вы не знаете таксистов здесь? в Атасу. Просто ищу друга Батир. Я был здесь в прошлом году. And that was exactly where I encountered the greatest coincidence in the history of coincidences. Борода есть, да. Да, вы знаете его, да? Да ладно. С киргизскими номерами, я помню. Это ваш брат. А где он сейчас? Он не знает, он здесь. Но он до обеда только будет. Ah. I finally had a lead to speak to my friend Batir. It was of vital importance for us to speak to him, not only because it would have been nice to have the chance to reconnect with an old friend, but also because he could have given us some recommendations on the route that we wanted to follow to Karajal and then to Shalginski. Он, он просто не ва рассказал вашу историю. Мы в сентябре поехали в памятник в Союз 11, в Шальгинске, но машина сломалась и не получилась, поэтому я сейчас арендовал машину и хочу снова попробовать. И пока, пока я проехал, я хотел сказать привет. Потому что сейчас в Каражал. Да работаете там? Не, не, я буду там, как туристические цели, чтобы фотографировать памятник. Вот только осторожно ходите. Вот. Почему? Ну, опасно же здесь. Что? Что опасно? Люди или трасса? Ну, трасса, там же этот, лошади, сейчас его номер. Да. Сейчас. Телефона. Номер телефона. Запишите. Wow, this is crazy. We found Batir's sister. <laughs> Which is the good news. The bad news is that she has no idea. She has no idea where he is. But I was like, really? The Batir that I'm looking for? The one with the Kyrgyz number plate? And she was like, yeah, that one. But she said that he only works here until lunch time and we're obviously way past that so what we're gonna try and do now is we're gonna try and give him a call the moment of truth had now come i had one chance to speak to my friend Batir, 
and I only had one opportunity to get some good old advice on how to proceed further in the Kazakh desert. And once again, my luck was sailing the right way. Здравствуйте, Батер. Да, вы помните итальянца, с которым вы поехали? Да, Вида, да, это я, это я. Я, представляете, я познакомился с вашей сестрой здесь. Я здесь в Атасу, вы тоже? Знаете, куда я? Я снова в Шальгинске сейчас попробую посмотреть памятник. Арендовал машину, проехал через Атасу, и я думал, ну, наверное, я... я говорю привет, я скажу привет Батиру. Ну, я сейчас поеду в Каражал. Там гостиница, там гостиница есть в Каражал, да? The thing was that on this trip I was fairly confident in being able to reach the closest populated village to the coordinates of the Soyuz 11 landing site, Shalginsky, but then I wasn't quite sure how to avoid getting lost in the last segment of the route from Shalginsky through the middle of the desert towards the monument dedicated to the crew of Soyuz 11. I was hoping to maybe get some help from one of the 15 people still living nowadays in Shalginsky and I wanted to ask Batir if he still knew somebody there living in Shalginsky from the time that our car broke down in the vicinity of the village when we had somebody fix our car in the middle of the night thus saving our lives. Да, да, а у вас есть его номер телефона? Он был он. И он помнил о мне, видите? И он сказал, что у него есть знаком. А, да. И он сказал, что скинет номер. Я хочу вам дать мой номер в WhatsApp. Привет. А вы живете здесь? Да. А как жить здесь, в Атасу? Ну, есть маникюр, есть парикмахерская, есть, есть все, есть да. Дорогой. Меня зовут Давид, хорошо? Угу. А вас? Жайна. Жайна? Ахни. Ахни? О, очень красивые. Мы, мы как особо. будем в Италии, мы вам позвоним. <laughs> да, ну да, у вас есть мой номер, поэтому... When I graduated in translation studies back a few years ago from my Italian university, my Russian professor was expecting me to become a professional interpreter, maybe working for prominent diplomatic personas for some of the most notorious European institutions. Instead, I'm out here relying on my Russian skills to be flirted on by a couple of really nice Kazakh girls in a decrepit beauty salon in the middle of the Kazakh desert. Such is life. И мы будем на дороге до Каражала. Хорошо? Да, спасибо. Если что, пишите. Хорошо, спасибо вам большое. But the party wasn't on only on the inside of the beauty salon as when I came out, I found my man Fred who was talking to a very random dude who, very randomly, wanted to give Fred a very random present. Что, что? Салам алейкум. Салам Давайте я вам дорогу один а, у нас времени. Но, в дороге не пейте, как только в гостиницу приедете, тогда только пейте. But everything was happening at once in Atasu and my brain could literally barely keep up. I also stumbled into a character that is quite recurrent in our videos, that is the local drumster of Atasu. Что? Если что, блядь, если неправильно говоришь, я тебе найду. <laughs> Хорошо, я Ой. обещаю, что я всегда буду правильно говорить. Ага. Хорошо, я буду снимать с самого лучшего Ой. вашего города. Атасу, слава Атасу. А снимайте. Да, а да. Если, если что, блядь. Ну, видите, у вас уже хорошие дороги, хорошие я люди тебе, блядь, здесь. Я найду. Да, меня Пару. зовут Давид. меня зовут Давид. Давид. Хорошо, да, Давид. Меня зовут... помните о мне. Жмай. Жмай, очень приятно, спасибо. Я буду снимать Сейчас только вас. Я там... Знаю, где этот поворот, mm -hmm. Да, да, да. Но мы найдем дорогу, не переживайте. Спасибо а вам большое. Пока, брат. Рахмат. 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 Да, Рахмат. Рахмат. Well, this turned out to be a very successful mission here in Hatasu because we've met Batir's sister. We didn't see Batir, but we've made acquaintances with the kind ladies who run the beauty salon of Atasu and obviously we also managed to have a chat with Batir on the phone who again gave me some advice on how to get to Karajao Salam! 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 Mamma mia! Salam! How are you speaking Russian? 
Нет, только по казахски. Салам, рахмат. Бро, why the f*** are you holding a bottle of a very questionable liquid in your hand? Wait a second, is this? Like there's something moving inside. Actually, oh my god, this have bottle no is like idea I wouldn't drink it if I, like what happened? So, why, why are you holding that in your hand? Some of the young guys here came to me as a tourist and talked to me, where do you come from? Blah blah blah. I'm from France, he's from Italy. Okay, so wait, I'm gonna give you the national drink. The national drink? I don't of remember, Kazakhstan. I don't remember it looks what was very the name, questionable. <laughs> what he told me is that we should drink it once we arrived at our, at our point. At our hotel. And just to make sure that we do arrive at our hotel, what I would do is actually try and see if we can fuel up. Well, it's pretty cool that everybody knows each other in the small villages around Kazakhstan in this part of, in this part of the country. And it's crazy to think, oh, again, we're passing by the Soviet monument once again because we're retracing our steps back to where we can find the Zapravka where we can refuel for our last stretch of the road for today and uh, yeah very small towns of Kazakhstan but this town again this village is at least 257 times bigger than the village of Shalginsky where we are going to be passing by forcibly tomorrow and definitely a lot bigger than the town of Karajal as well which is going to be our final destination for the day but not until we have refueled our car so we went on to get what we would soon find to be some of the cheapest fuel that we had ever seen in our young lives. There are so many life skills that I haven't been taught in my life and I could barely do the refueling bit myself. Mozda! Okay, okay, okay. Wow, we even need help for refueling! In this part of Kazakhstan, in the meanwhile, a storm is picking up, wow! Well, we need help with refueling <laughs> here in Kazakhstan. We're such a mess. But, at least, we have refueled now. And we've got a storm picking up here in the steps, which are not really steps yet, of Kazakhstan. It's currently 15 minutes past 7. We've got roughly an hour and a half before sunset. I really don't want to be looking for a hotel in Karajao while well it's dark i want to do it before sunset so let's get moving even though it's raining but we're inside the car so we have nothing to fear this is like much smaller in scale to what the cosmonauts of Soyuz 11 were attempting of doing back 50 or 60 years ago so let's do it in their honor Alrighty, so we're now on the main road to Karajal the side road to Karajal, I should say. The road is getting worse and worse. We've got 90 kilometers left and we've got 90 minutes left until, until sunset. It's not so bad for me generally to drive with no daylight, but the main problem is that, oh my God, oh my God, look at this road. The main problem is that I've been advised that at night there might be a lot of, there might be a lot of camels and you know, horses and cows snakes and wolves and that kind of stuff crossing the road after sunset making it very difficult to avoid those animals if you can't see them so that's why it's quite dangerous it's a bit like Australia Kazakhstan is basically the Australia of Central Asia so this is the road sign that tells us that we haven't got much between here now in Karajal we've got 95 kilometers of absolute nothing because then you've got a couple of other villages which are a long way down the road and Shalgya 174 kilometers from from here is actually the other name for Shalginsky where we're going tomorrow but in order to get there we'll have to pass by Karajal so you see that one Shalgya is where we're going tomorrow, 174 kilometers. And then Aktau and Jambil, I think those are some other villages in the middle of the absolute freaking nowhere Hope in the Kazakh steppe. As we're now approaching sunset, it's absolutely fantastic to look at the landscape that we've got right here, which is the landscape of the steppes of Kazakhstan, the infinite steppes of Kazakhstan, I should say. Because if I look to my right, there's absolutely nothing 
for thousands and thousands of kilometers the the horizon is just so far away you can see this landscape right here which was absolutely perfect for the Soviet Union at the time and even now to be honest to have their cosmonauts and astronauts land to conclude their space missions just because there's very few mountains in this part of Kazakhstan there's very few people there's very few in inhabited centers just in case maybe the Soviet Union needed to keep something secret about their space missions the perfect kind of terrain to put an end to whatever kind of heroic Soyuz mission they wanted to do back in the 1950s and 60s and 70s with only one of them, unfortunately, ending in disaster, the Soyuz 11 one. At this point, I was really having an internal struggle trying to keep tears from streaming down my face. I was comparing my Hyundai car to some of the rudimental space capsules that back some 50 years ago used to take cosmonauts into space from this very lens right here. And I was also very emotional at the thought of being probably the very first Italian to set foot in these remote longitudes of the world. The weather here is absolutely crazy. The weather is crazy, but I'll also tell you one thing, this is absolutely beautiful. If you mix the colors of the setting sun with the dark clouds that you've got right there, it's still spitting down with rain a bit. And you look at these massive steps right here, and it really looks like you could be, you could be anywhere in the world, really. I mean, not literally anywhere, but this could be the US. This could be somewhere in Africa, Namibia. This is how I imagine Botswana to be like, right? And wow, this is just beautiful. Have you ever seen anything like this? As the sun gradually moved closer to the edge of the skies, we also got closer to the end of the road in Karajal. Just a few kilometers before our destination, however, we were greeted by a massive downpour, which slightly delayed our mission. Wow, so many things going on on this cosmic adventure to the middle of absolute nowhere. And the more that we continue to Karajal, the more I realize that we are indeed in the middle of absolute nowhere, we haven't seen a single car in the past 70 kilometers. Have you ever been in a place more remote than this? Mm, I don't think so, no. Ladies and gentlemen, we've made it to Karajal. You can see the gates. I don't remember this thing being here last year. It's very possible that they've put it up this year although it's weird <laughs> but it does look fairly new and over there is the town of Karajal where I don't think it'll be too safe to walk around really at this time of the day or of the evening I should say so I think the very first thing that we will do is get a hotel get the first hotel that we can find and when I say first hotel I mean the only hotel in town I really hope that there is one so I don't think we'll want to do much walking around today we'll just try to go to bed get some rest and then tomorrow we'll continue this way 80 kilometers towards Shalginsky on this road that we tried venturing on one year ago but that won't be until tomorrow morning for now we'll be turning right into the semi-abandoned town of Karajal fingers crossed there's a hotel man fingers very crossed. How do you say fingers crossed in French? Les doigts, les doigts croisés. Yeah. Well, say it again. No, croisons les doigts. Croisons les doigts. Wow, look at that. When your first sign of the city is you being welcomed by some abandoned commie blocks, there's not a very reassuring sign. For most people, but for me it is. There was no internet signal whatsoever in Karajal, so we had no way of checking Google Maps. But even if there had been signal, there was no hotel to be shown on any online map anyway. Ready, let me go and ask for a hotel if there is one. While driving on one of the only two roads in Karajal, we found this cafe which gave us the impression of being open 
So I went inside to ask for directions. Здрасте! По-русски говорите, да? Да. О, вау! А здесь есть гостиница в вашем городе, да? Да, есть. Как мы можем доехать туда? А вы знаете Каража, да? Нет. Как я вам скажу? Не знаю, то вы хотите со мной. Поехали сейчас. Да? Хорошо, хорошо. О, у вас что здесь? Это кафе. А? И до скольки работает? До 12. О, oh, вау! Wow. У вас вечеринки здесь есть, я говорю. О, интересно. I was thoroughly, thoroughly impressed. Who would have thought that in our mission to the landing site of the Soyuz 11 mission, we would have met such an amazing sense of hospitality in one of the semi-abandoned cosmic towns in the middle of the Kazakh desert. So much that the very first person in town that we met offered to take us to the only hotel in town themselves. У нас машина там. Давайте я за своей поеду, покажу вам. За мной. Мы следуем. Да, за мной едьте, за мной. Хорошо, замечательно. Спасибо вам большое. Come on, man. I found somebody who can take us to the hotel. I found a random babushka who agreed to take us to the only hotel in the town of Karajal. So we just need to follow the car, man. And this woman, this very kind woman, has agreed to take us to the hotel. We just need to follow her. So let's go. Подождите, подождите. Let's go. Let's play a game. Follow the babushka to the hotel of Karajal. By the way, there's a very nice restaurant <laughs> that I just went into. And maybe it's open until 12. So maybe we can go and have some fun tonight. In the meanwhile, we're going through the very center of the town of Karajal. It actually looks way better than what I was expecting. Вот это здесь? Да, вот это. А, хорошо, спасибо вам большое. А вы, хорошо, может, что или сегодня, или утром за завтра. Хорошо, спасибо. The very first thing that we did was obviously cross our fingers in hope that they would have a room available for us. Although I definitely did not expect that they would get many visitors there. Номера есть? Да? Найдем. Найдем, замечательно. У вас, наверное, единственная гостиница в городе, да? Наверное, да. Все доступны? Да. А, наверное, можно их посмотреть? Нет, здесь не экскурсия. Я имею в виду, что посмотреть, чтобы решить, какой... Я вам обещаю, что вам понравится. Какой номер хотите? Туалет в комнате? Все есть. Замеч... Wi-Fi, наверное, у вас Все есть. Все есть. О, замечательно. Тогда берем. На сколько? Э, до завтра. 21. 15. Так, это у нас какой девятый? Вот в это время завтра у вас кончается. А, 24 часов? Да. А, ого, вот интересно. Это... Если что, вы, вы там, да? Вы всегда здесь. Да, 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 да. да. Если меня даже нет, позвонили, я приду. Хорошо. За что ты не хочешь? Вот. Пошел, Спасибо вам большое. Можете До свидания. Wow, what a place this is, right? 10,000 tenge. I don't even know where to start from. All right, we've paid around 20 euros for this triple room because we've got three beds. There wasn't any room available with only two beds. So we had to take the triple room and uh, it's pretty good, I'll tell you that. The only hotel room available in the whole semi-abandoned town of Karajal, which we have had the chance to say that it's not so much abandoned, it's semi-abandoned because we have seen quite a few people over the course of the past 30 minutes. We can have a look at the bathroom and uh, yeah, it's typical here in Kazakhstan. You can see we have the toilet right next to the shower. So when you're taking a poo, you can actually do two things in once. And maybe you can have a shampoo while you're taking your poo. That's amazing, right? So well done, hotel. Does this place even have a name? I don't think there was any name, right? No. This is just the hotel of Karajal. Yes, please stay away from me. What a place. We've just went for a walk just outside of our hotel, which by the way is, is in the city center. And oh my God, I'm getting so much Vorkuta vibes from, from this place, it's insane. Semi-abandoned, that one is fully abandoned. This one looks to be semi-abandoned. This is the most depressing place in Kazakhstan I've ever seen. I want to make a standalone video out of this one, but obviously the sun is setting. And I have to say, it's probably because of the sunset that the town looks so romantic and beautiful in its own way. But there's not much that we can do here. I think I'll go back to the hotel room and have some of the grissini that I bought before this trip 
or we can go to the cafe where we've met the very kind babushka who led us, who showed us the way to the hotel. We'll see. But in regards to going to Shalginsky and complete our mission of reaching the landing site of the Soyuz 11 monument, then we'll have to wait until tomorrow morning. Thanks ever so much for joining us on the first day of our adventure towards the Soyuz 11 monument.